are now joined by number five UFC bantamweight Pedro Munoz. Our first question goes to Gabriel Gonzalez with Kate Side Press. Hello, Pedro. How are you? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thanks for asking. So it's been uh, quite a few twists and turns, to say the least. Can you describe what the experience is like to finally reach fight week for this one? Yeah, man, this definitely has been like a crazy, crazy things happening in the worldwide right now, all over the place, you know. So uh, I feel very grateful to to have the opportunity to fight during, you know, pandemic. And besides that, you know, just to be a part of a main event against a, another former champ. So has been crazy, but at the same time, it's not. I'm glad you brought that up. You've been in big fights before, Cody Garbrandt, Aljo, but with a guy like Frankie Edgar who held the belt and he's been at the top for a while, would you say this is the biggest one of your career? I Yes, it's definitely like one of the biggest fights of my career, you know, but I do believe also that every single fight, it's the biggest fight of my career, you know. For the fights that I have previous, that's the reason that I'll be able to do this fight. You know, I have just been fighting uh, for the last seven years over, you know, the UFC organization. I just fought the best fighters since my first fight. I got a one week notice against, you know, a guy number three back then. And Robbie Fawn, Brad Jones, Brian Caraway, like great guys and tough opponents, you know, uh, it's just showed that, you know, I... I go there and I do my job and I leave everything in the octagon. No regrets. With Yoel Romero versus Uriah Hall off the card, now there's just even more attention. A lot of people would say they're all tuning in just to see you two fight. Is there, I guess, more pressure because you know there's more of a chance to really boost your name if you get a big victory? Is there a pressure if I think that way? But... What I try to think it's I do what I love. So for that, I'm very grateful for, you know, especially through pandemic, when we see like the economy worldwide, you know, going very bad and me here right now, do what I love, fighting with a former champ. You know, I think a, what I think is like a pressure is for people right now at home, they lost their job, you know, kids not going to school and moms or dads, they're doing all that, taking care. You know, besides that, you know, pressure is the homeless <clears throat> on the streets, things like that. I think that's a lot of pressure. You know, it is a pressure. Yeah, it is a pressure. But at the end of the day, I'm doing what I love, you know. And if I get hurt or if I don't get hurt, it's part of my job. It's fun. So it's all depending on, like, the point of view. I understand that. Are you expecting anything different from Frankie at Bantamweight compared to what you've seen from him at Featherweight? Oh, yeah, definitely. Faster, stronger, you know, uh, skills-wise, he's going to be sharper. Final question for me. Um, at Bantamweight, there's obviously the big three at the top, Peter Jan, Aljo, Marlon Moraes. Who do you see coming out on top after all three of those guys, you know, compete against each other? Wow. Uh, Marlon Moraes has been a training partner of mine for the last year and a half. You know, a guy that has a lot of capability there, a lot of skills, very strong. Uh, Aljo, super, a lot, of, a lot of skills as well. Smart fighter. Peter Yan, super tough. You know, it is. And then I do believe I get a, like a good victory Saturday night. So I throw my gonna throw me right there i'm now number five oh you know we're talking about the number one two and three so i do believe i will get in that in the mix so yeah it's just a part of the evolution of the sport you know it's it just has been great and see that much good athletes lately thanks pedro no worries thank you our next question is from jim barcelona with the miami Herald. Oh, thank you so much. Hey, Pedro, what is it like? And I know you fighters, you're focused on the fight, but you're in the main event, ESPN, UFC fight night. It's such a huge deal. It's such a big event. Just what is it like? Do you ever get to look back a little bit and just say, wow, this is so cool? 
Definitely, man. That's a great question. This is really cool. I was just talking with this, like, in a, you know, someone before you. And it's definitely the word that I can say that is very, I'm very grateful for that. You know, it's, it's pretty joy, you know, be able to do, make money, you know, through pandemic, being a part of the main event in UFC and fighting the former champ is just a lot of good things out there happening for a reason, you know, and and that's my chance right now and that's the moment and you know i'm that's the reason that i love to do what i do i do that very i do that with a lot of pay, passion and i feel very grateful if i'm correct on reading this your last fight was june in 2019 what does that mean that time you, you're an experienced fighter does the experience help you because of that how do you keep from not getting rusty Great question. Yeah, uh, has been a little over than a year, you know, uh, before fighting Aljo was fighting guys that was coming to fight. Aljo was the guy that was very smart. You know, he was using his land. He was, uh, he, he, he was more a strategy in the fight, you know, and in my point of view. So, and also I was able to, for the last year, to to involve also my skills and get better in fighting a guy that sometimes he's not gonna come into my fight you know sometimes he's gonna just do enough to win by points and stuff like that sometimes uh it was not something that i was used to it but i had a, like a little over in a year to to get better to get better in that sense of if a guy's gonna just winning just by points or uh things like that so i could i, I could it was it was a good timing because i was able to to get together with all my coaches and see what i did wrong in the fight what i could do better and we had all this time a month later after the fight i was you know back in the gym helping my my, my friends getting ready for fights and stuff like that and also it was you know uh i took that fight i took that loss like a, like a learning uh, process, you know, for me to 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 see what I need to get better at, and I I I do believe that I did in my homework, and I do believe that I got a little bit smarter in that sense. And Saturday is a good test, you know, to to put it all that in perspective and putting my game style there. And Pedro, you were hit with the COVID. You were supposed to fight earlier, but you got hit with the COVID. Just how bad was it for you during that time? How serious health-wise was it? Was it just being in quarantine for a couple of weeks? How did that process go for you, and how serious did you get with that? Yeah, I just see, like, uh, it all depends how we see things, you know. I just, in that moment, I just tried to to be grateful, you know, to nothing worse could have happened with me and my family. We all got sick. We all, you know, tested positive for COVID but you know luckily and very grateful that you know nobody had to go to hospital and things like that you know i have a daughter a uh, small daughter in the house you know my wife and things like that we got felt a little bit sick but it was something that we could have worked through and we're here today and just two more real quick the pandemic did you train differently because you had experienced covid did you train differently after that with att or no i took like a week and and that week that i took off i did a lot of tests you know i was very grateful to dan lambert you know the guy that owns american top team he was you know really like taking care of me and every single fighter at american top team uh i was getting tested almost every day and all the tests was coming back in the negative as soon as i went back to florida uh i think it was at the end of whatever you know so it was as soon as i got back to florida i did the test that day i was negative the day before i did another test two days later i got the results i was negative as well did some other blood tests and things like that and i took a week off so i can recover from driving back to vegas in florida it took 40 hours you know, drove with my friend Mike Brown, which got tested positive as well. He was with Jorge Masvidal in that, to 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 fight Usman. We drove back, so um, yeah. So was able to 
all my tests come back positive, so I could not put it, you know, other other people like in risk and things like that. Came back to training, my be ready to go. So, we, you know, we took a little bit easy in that week, and little by little, we started picking up. And we we finished this training camp great, very strong. All right, I had a couple more, but you know what? Let someone else ask. Thank you so much, Pedro. All the best. Fight night on ESPN, UFC. Appreciate it. Thank you. Our next question is from Damon Martin with MMA Fighting. Hey, Pedro. Uh, kind of going back to the COVID situation last month, can you kind of walk me through the emotion of, you know, going all the way out to Vegas, you're getting ready to fly to Fight Island, and they tell you to test positive for COVID. I talked to Mike Brown. I think I actually talked to him while you guys were in the car, and he said, you know, it's a, it's an emotional experience to go through that and, and know that you're putting other people at risk, all the things that kind of walk through that. Like, can you kind of give me the idea of the emotions you felt during that time? Definitely, man, definitely. It's a great question. It was definitely like a roller coaster emotions, you know, getting Vegas, get ready to fight, big fight of my career, and then get the next day a call saying I got test positive for COVID. I was immediately shocked at the moment, uh, but you know, a few minutes later, I started like understanding more. It's just a bad situation that we are all going through right now, and I just trust the process, you know. And the same day as we were driving, me, and Mike Brown, driving to Florida, I got a, a text saying that a message text saying that the fight was that was going to happen. And Frankie was not fighting nobody in Abu Dhabi. So in that moment, I felt happy again, you know, happy again. So uh, as soon as I came back home, <clears throat> me and my family, we make sure we, you know, we were good. And luckily, luckily that, you know, we got sick, but nobody had to, to go to the hospital, no health issues. You know, I was very grateful for that. Very lucky, you know, knowing that a lot of people are suffering a lot through this COVID. I see, you know, we see in the news, which we should not believe as much we do. But anyway, uh, people were getting sick, you know. So for me, it was it was very grateful for. As soon as I got back to Florida, uh, we got a test every day in the day, and the test came back the next day negative. We like, oh, it's weird. We took another test and negative again. So I, 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 even though I took another week off to make sure it was, you know, negative, like the travel itself was a long drive. Imagine Vegas to Florida, it was literally cr cross country. You know, we drove that, we didn't stop. So it was exhausting. So I took that week to rest. And then uh, seven days later, I started training again, pick up the intensity little by little, make sure everything was good. And a week later, I got a great news that there was they pushed that fight a week later to the main event, so it, it made me it gave me a extra uh, motivation to to do what I do and just to show like the best version that I I could be myself. Yeah, obviously, Pedro, you've had a lot of big wins in this division. And you mentioned where you're ranked; you're still in that top five, and you know Frankie is is new coming in. But he obviously is a guy who's been around forever, been a champion, been a contender of featherweight. Like, in a lot of ways, do you feel like this is actually a bigger fight for you than fighting another ranked opponent? No offense to the guys who are ranked, but just because of who Frankie is. Definitely. No, you you, you, you completely right in that sense, you know. Uh, like I, I said in some of the interviews before and I told people before, I started watching UFC. You know, the first guys that I watched, it was very early age in my life. It was Hoisey Gracie. And then later on, I was, UFC was already starting getting big, you know, more fighters, better SQ, just the evolution of the sport itself. So Frankie was the guy that used to call my attention because the skills wise, he was not even a jiu-jitsu guy fighting a boxer guy like back in those days. He was a guy that well-rounded boxing, wrestling, jiu-jitsu and all that, full works and things like that. And right now I have just the opportunity to be fighting a, live, a living legend like that as in a main event. So it's, um, let's say it was, that's one of the biggest fight of my life, you know, but every single fight, it is the biggest fight of my life. You know, Robbie Fong was a guy <clears throat> that was super tough, you know, fought a hand in Brazil. 
uh, Brian Caraway, veteran, well-rounded. Even before UFC, you know, fought guys like Jeff Kern, guys like that. So uh, I just fought, like you said, the beginning, you know, of the conversation. I, I w I'm very grateful to 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 being exposed to such a young age of my life and UFC just to the best fighters, you know, in the division, the best fighters, being able to fight the best fighters in the world, you know. So for me right now, it's just another challenge. It's just another guy who's really good. But in the end of the day, he has two arms like I do. He has two legs, what I do. And we're going to see who wants more. And my last question, Pedro, a win over Frankie Edgar means something. I mean, Frankie has lost to so few guys in his career. Beating Frankie Edgar really means something. And you look at the division, I think we all hope, or at least we imagine, we're going to see Peter Yan against Aljamain Sterling. I know your teammate, Marlon Marais, has got Corey Sandhagen. Where do you feel like a win over Frankie puts you? Because after the Cody fight, you were right there. I know you had the battle with Aljo, but do you feel like you're right in that mix where you want to be in terms of that title? Because it feels like right now, Bantamweight is, is better than it's ever been. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. We have so many good fights right now, right? So my teammate, Marlon Mora, is fighting Sede Hagen, another, another tough opponent, which lost to Aljo. You know, it just show like, how good Aljo is as well, you know? And if you see our fight a year ago was very close, you know, I was able to to work some things to if I fight Aljin again, you know, it's going to be a different. I'm not going to just waiting for him to come bang it out with me. You know, I know he's he works in a little bit different way. So for me, I had to take that loss to see that it's not about fighting every single time. Sometimes it's about to, you know, work things different. You know, we're talking about in a sport that it's constantly uh evolving you know and we gotta just be smarter and i was able to you know to take that loss and take the whole year you know seeing what i did and what i could do better and i do believe like uh aljo if he would fight with a peter yeah and depending how that fight goes on a saturday you know i want to bake i want to make a big statement and i want to be the next for the title shot Thank you, Pedro. Thank you. Our last question is from Diogo Souza with Tribuna do Paraná. Olá, Pedro. Beleza, cara? Tudo bom? Opa, maravilha. Vamos lá, cara. É, eu queria que você começasse falando aí do, da tua preparação com, com os treinadores curitibanos aí, né, cara? Você tem uma parceria com o Catel, com com Everton. Como que foi, cara? Pô, vou te falar, uh, na verdade, os treinadores curitibanos, né, uh, fazem, fazem muito, faz, eles fazem parte, assim, da, da minha trajetória, da minha evolução durante muitos, muitos anos, né. Uh, eu comecei, eu vim para os Estados Unidos em 2010, comecei a treinar com o Dida, primeiro, com o André Dida, né. Legal. Aí, logo depois de um pouco menos de um ano, o Dida voltou para o Brasil, aí o Rafael Cordeiro tomou a frente da Black House, você treinar com o Rafael Cordeiro, no qual eu treinei com ele durante sete anos, peguei a, 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 a faixa preta, né? Que a galera fala, pô, Muay Thai não tem faixa, mas não é Muay Thai, é o estilo curitibano, você sabe muito bem, é o estilo do chutebox que veio das antigas, entendeu? Eles falam faixa, cordão negro, enfim. Então, aí, desde então, eu mudei para American Top Team, comecei a treinar com o Catel, com o Macarrão e com o Everton, minha preparação física, entendeu? Então, assim, a trajetória, assim, na parte da minha vida... Com, com pessoas assim do Paraná, de Curitiba, assim, uh, a gente está falando, tá falando coisas de desde, desde a minha mudança do, estado, do, do Brasil para os Estados Unidos. Pô, legal, cara, show de bola. É, pô, pelas tuas redes sociais ali, a gente acompanha que tu, tu é bem próximo aí da tua filha, né? É, e como que é a tua relação, assim, com quando o cara, quando você vai lutar e tal, ela acompanha? Como que é, cara? É, não, minha filhinha, ela cresceu praticamente no, no tatame, né? Ah, quando ela nasceu, a minha esposa ainda estava trabalhando naquela época. Ah, ela começou a ir comigo praticamente com os meses, foi crescendo naquele, naquele ambiente, entendeu? Hoje em, dia, hoje em dia, ela vai para academia, ela já começou a fazer jiu-jitsu quando ela tinha 3 anos de idade. Hoje em dia, ela estava fazendo a ginástica antes da pandemia, teve que parar, entendeu? Ela... Luta é, é uma coisa que faz parte da nossa vida, da minha vida, assim... Pra mim é difícil me desligar disso, eu tento me desligar para ser um pai, um marido mais presente, 
é difícil, é uma coisa assim que eu tenho assim, muita paixão, assim, a luta em si. Então é algo assim que ela tem convívio desde quando ela nasceu, entendeu? A gente assiste sempre lutas e a gente tenta desligar de uma maneira ou outra, mas como eu te disse, é difícil. Então ela... ela isso, isso eu não sei se é do, do ambiente ou se é algo dela ou não, mas ela gosta de ir na academia, eu tenho, eu tenho prazer também de levar ela para academia, para ela ter esse envolvimento, esse conhecimento sobre o esporte, eu apoio ela em, em outras áreas do esporte também, na ginástica olímpica, recentemente ela ia começar a capoeira, aí começou a pandemia, chegou lá, ela chegou a fazer algumas aulas, e eu quero que ela fez futebol também, então assim, de uma maneira ou outra eu tento apresentar para elas assim os esportes, e aí quando ela crescer no esporte em si, entendeu saber qual a importância assim da, da, da atividade física da alimentação em si e aí pode ser possa fazer parte da vida dela ou não como profissão ou como hobby show maravilha cara para para encerrar da minha parte aqui cara o pessoal já perguntou aí de, de da, da luta em si e tal eu queria que você falasse pô você vai fazer a tua tua grande luta aí né vai Fazer uma luta principal, o que que te motiva, cara, durante, o que que te motivou durante toda a carreira e quem que te inspirou a entrar nesse mundo aí, cara, das artes marciais? Boa pergunta, brother. Essa motivação da luta em si, brother, uh, eu sempre tento fazer essa reflexão e sempre tento me lembrar lá um tempo atrás. O meu pai, ele foi um cara que ele foi muito, ele gostou muito de futebol. E, e como ele gostava de brigar nos jogos ele sempre soube da importância da briga, da, da, da luta, da, da defesa pessoal em si. A partir disso, eu tive, eu comecei a gostar muito dos filmes, logo, logo, logo no início da minha vida, do Jean-Claude Van Damme. Eu, porra, eu ficava fissurado nos filmes dele, naquele kickboxer, que o irmão dele luta com o Tom Poe, ele vai pra Tailândia. Eu sei, um, hoje, é um dos melhores filmes pra mim até hoje em dia. Até mesmo é o Bloodsport, né, que no Brasil chama Dragão Branco. Ah, era um filme que me fissurava também, ele viajava assim no mundo inteiro, fazia parte do comitê. E logo nessa idade, com 4, 5 anos, ah, eu pedi pro meu pai que eu queria fazer kickboxing. No Brasil, o kickboxing era... Era mais nos Estados Unidos, no Brasil era o Karatê nessa época e o Judô. Então eu fiz bastante Karatê na, 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 na minha infância. Sempre gostei, parava, recomeçava, parava, recomeçava. Então assim, a arte marcial, o esporte de combate sempre esteve envolvido na minha vida desde, desde meus princípios, entendeu? E aí com 13, 14 anos foi quando eu me envolvi com o um esporte mesmo, que foi o Jiu-Jitsu, assistindo o Royce Grace no UFC nos primeiros UFC 1, 2 e 3. Eu achei o jiu-jitsu muito eficaz, queria treinar jiu-jitsu, encontrei uma academia uh, perto do meu bairro, onde eu morava, meu pai me matriculou, coisa de seis meses já estava competindo, e assim, entrei assim, admiração e paixão muito grande pelo esporte, eu queria fazer isso por vida, meu pai falava, não, mas você não consegue, você não vai conseguir fazer dinheiro com isso, daí você não tem como, não sei o que lá, você tem que estudar, você tem que, no qual eu fiz educação física, mas eu sempre soube que eu poderia viver da arte marcial, da luta em si, entendeu? Então essa motivação assim sempre teve em mim, e eu nunca pensei no esporte como uma maneira de ganhar dinheiro, eu sempre teve a paixão primeiro, entendeu? Eu sempre coloquei a paixão em primeiro lugar, e nisso eu sempre quis melhorar. E é logo no princípio, quando eu comecei a fazer jiu-jitsu, por volta dos meus 16, 17 anos, eu quis fazer o boxing para melhorar o meu cardio no jiu-jitsu. E eu comecei a gostar de um boxe de uma maneira que eu competi boxe. Fiz algumas lutas durante esse período. E aí o jiu-jitsu começou a ficar um pouco banal para mim, devido às pessoas querer ganhar por vantagem, usar aquela guarda 50-50. Você acompanha jiu-jitsu ou não? Sim, sim, é. Então começou a ficar um esporte um pouco banal. Aí eu queria algo que poderia trazer mais emoção. Aí eu comecei a participar mais de torneios sem kimono do que de kimono, no qual eu poderia usar mais as minhas qualidades de explosão, força, resistência. Comecei a treinar o wrestling no Brasil, que tinha alguns cubanos que estavam lá. Tive a oportunidade de treinar o wrestling, então assim... E nesse período eu quis pegar minha faixa preta, quis ser campeão mundial de jiu-jitsu, no qual não fui campeão mundial de jiu-jitsu, 
mas eu já, com meus 16, 17 anos, já vim aprimorando já a parte em pé. Então, para mim, foi uma, foi uma adaptação muito fácil, porque eu fiz o Karatê um pouco né, na, 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 na parte da minha infância, então, a luta em si, em pé, ela veio com uma adaptação fácil, entendeu? Então, hoje em dia, a galera fala, pô, você é um cara que veio do jiu-jitsu, entre aspas, entendeu? Eu comecei no jiu-jitsu, mas eu, eu, eu coloquei muita ênfase na luta em pé em si. Isso que no, no, no qual eu, eu acredito que me ajudou chegar onde eu, onde eu cheguei hoje e, e ser um lutador completo. Show de bola, cara. Muito obrigado e boa sorte aí no sabadão. Tamo junto. Obrigado. That's all the time we have for you today, Pedro. Thank you. Sure.